<laughs> you can make little, you can, those little smokies, you know, the little hot dog yes. things, little smokies. You yep. can make a cheese ball or you can, you can make some kind of dip. I yeah. make a lot of dips. Those are all kind of traditional. Yeah. You could also kick things up and make, let's say, uh, savory lollipops that'll leave your guests asking for the recipe. And Mike's over here working his well, magic right now. Don't want it to burn. Don't want to <laughs> Love it. Uh, anyway, it's a pleasure to welcome back food fanatic Chef Michael Rhodes. Good to see you, Chef. Hey, Chef. Morning, happy I'm holidays. I'm just getting this drizzle going. Hey, by the way, we were talking about fruitcake at the top of the show. When's the mm -hmm. last time you... A, made a fruitcake, B, mm -hmm. tasted a fruitcake. And enjoyed, C, the fruitcake. Uh, right, and enjoyed it. <laughs> it's none <laughs> to all of the above. <laughs> I've never it? made one, I've never enjoyed one, and I've yeah. never even tasted there's one. Really, You've never really tasted a fruitcake either? There's nope. a good one somewhere. No, okay, we're talking about appetizers today. It's perfect timing because we got mm -hmm. some holiday parties that are still coming up here. Yeah. What, what appetizers are we making? So we're going to do a couple, uh, three New Year's Eve, easy, mm -hmm. semi-easy, uh, to make, and one... Uh, one, the first one, you can take your leftover chicken uh, or your leftover turkey mm -hmm. and make a pot pie out of it. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. So what did you throw in, if, if we're starting here, and you think this is super simple, and again, this is an appetizer, so chicken pot pie, you maybe think of like that is the entree, but you'll see he's using these tiny little cups, so it's more of a finger food. But in this, do you use fresh vegetables, or would you be able to substitute frozen and still get a nice result? For the peas, I use a frozen product. Everything uh -huh. else is fresh inside It's fresh, there. so okay. the carrots and everything else. What are you using for the sauce to bind all that together? It's uh, cream, sour cream, a little mm -hmm. bit of cream cheese, mm -hmm. and then just a, uh, a slurry or a roux uh -huh. to drain it up. So you cook that all together. You cook it together, you, you, whatever you do with it. Reduce on, and it. Yeah. Reduce it. What do you want? And then a you've spoon. got... Uh, One of those spoons there. And and then these cups that you have with it, do you just purchase those or do you, you make those? You can actually make them or you can get them. Yeah, I'm buying those. No offense, I'm buying Jeff. those too. That seems like a lot of work. Is, that, is it a lot of work? It, it is a lot of work if you, because it's several layers of phyllo dough, mm -hmm. which is a very, very thin um, Middle Eastern dough. But I imagine it tastes better when you make it yourself because it's probably it's, it's Well, it depends on how fresh. good of a baker you are. Yeah, no, right. I'm not yeah. that great, so I think this is something where I would be better off buying And they it. are ve very delicate, so and you want to, yeah, you can actually get these at your local grocery store. I love that this and is a finger food now. It is. When you put that in there, then do you bake it again or is that nope. just that you're done? This is it. You're mm -hmm. done. You're yep. ready to roll. No topping it with anything. Once you fill them, you're good. Okay, we've got two others here. Chef, and the aroma in this studio on days like this, I feel it's, so bad for you at home because you're cheated out of the full experience when Chef Rhodes is on the blend. It's fantastic. Um, but what is, what is, is Mike this, working This is what's creating all the aroma right here. What is that this? is it. That is a, it's a, it's a take on a street, an Asian, Southeast Asian street here, food. I'll trade yeah. you places so you can get closer. <clears throat> okay. So Keeping basically, it's, a, it's a, a ground beef <coughs> yeah. and bacon. Yeah, I'm going to keep going. Uh, so you sure. blend it. So wait, you just mix it all together? Ground it's beef like a meatball. Yeah. Okay. And then you kind of form it so that it's a little bit more elongated. What would you put in there with it? You put milk or breadcrumbs or anything like that? Or a little egg, a little breadcrumb, and some gojujang. Mm -hmm. What uh, is that? Korean sauce. Okay. okay. It's a, And then a, a, a Thai curry is the base for mm -hmm. the sauce. Mm -hmm. How do you make ignorance. the sauce? Yeah. How, how do you make the sauce? Or can you just buy it in the yeah, special yeah, aisle just somewhere? Buy it. You can get it at the Asian food stores, uh -huh. or it's available through U.S. Foods it as well. It smells fantastic. Okay. Uh, so you've been so then you just you just throw these in the frying pan and cook them this way. Yep. My husband yep. would love those. Yeah. He would love I, those. I think he'll. Um, he should be here. Yeah, and so it's just your. You just have a couple sticks. You put a couple sticks in there. Mm -hmm. that, what so that and is? I always do uh, two sticks so that it doesn't spin yeah. on itself. Mm. Does that make sense? Clever. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Of And it's just an, an easier way to keep it more stable. Okay, okay. I have filled all of our Okay, um, you filled those up. And, and then you have, have one uh, more You have asparagus. Everybody loves asparagus. And this is, uh, this is good for vegetarians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can take a little bit of this and rub it on the inside. Okay. Or what is that? So it's a whole grain mustard. So he's got, and that also through U.S. Foods or, mm -hmm. okay. So whole grain mustard into the inside of the pastry, the and then you the take pastry. two pieces of pre-cooked. It's uh, shocked and or blanched and shocked. Okay. Which means uh, submerged in boiling water, mm -hmm. boiling salted water, and then as soon as it reaches its al dente, yeah, you take it out and throw it in some ice water. It stops the cooking process. But you see the mustard there, so quite it was just a touch of it in there because you don't want to overwhelm, right? That's right. Because that stuff's pretty flavorful. And, and then from that point you bake it. And that from, from that point you bake it, you're cooking the puff dough. How long you how long you bake it? It was about. Um, about 23 minutes. Mm -hmm. Do you need anything? <laughs> About 23 minutes. <laughs> About. Very precise. You can tell he's a master chef here. Do you need anything else when you're serving this? Like you, you need sauces or anything? You can actually take some more of the sauce uh -huh. and drizzle it over the top. Uh-huh. Um, or like a, a jam or reduced uh, balsamic vinegar. Yeah. Um, and that'll kick up the piquantness of it. Would you eat this with your fingers, chef? I would. Uh-huh. You're I would just grabbing it by the dough. I would eat all of these with my fingers because uh -huh. 
uh, holiday parties. That's what we do, right? Yeah. Uh, well, I love this. Right. I'd like to keep it casual. Sure. Yeah. We called you a food fanatic, and there's a reason why. Because mm -hmm. you got food fanatics. Uh, this <coughs> magazine that comes out. There's great recipes. A lot of uh, everything involving the restaurant world. It's all in here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to be a food fanatic exactly? You know, food fanatics are just driven towards uh, innovative, creative foods mm -hmm. for our clients, for our customers. Yeah, and who are your clients? Because it's not always just us. I mean, you're not really a home cook right. kind of thing. But here you are on the Morning Blend sharing recipes with us. But what do you do typically? So uh, my normal day, I'll go to independent restaurants, hospitals, mm -hmm. country clubs, hotels, mm -hmm. and teach them how to use our product. Mm -hmm. uh, train them how to uh, put something more innovative or creative on their menus, mm -hmm. um, using, of course, U.S. foods products. Yeah. But for the average person out there, the average home chef, mm -hmm. um, there's some great ideas. And the website, usfoods.com, is that where they go? or they usfoods.com or foodfanatic.com. Yeah. There's, there's a ton of innovative, creative recipes on there. Well, I love it because in every edition here, it's like what is in season, what is trending, it's all of that stuff. And I really, I feel like culturally we're starting to shift a little bit. And we saw this with like beer and whiskey and wine, for example. Now we're seeing with food, people want, mm -hmm. they want to know what makes some ingredients different than others. They want to be able to kind of craft stuff in the kitchen instead of just throwing a meal together. It's it's about the art. It is about the art. And there's also yeah, a balance between uh, baby boomers and millennials that uh -huh. we're trying to gap. Right okay. Now. What do you mean? Well, there's millennials are, are more concerned about organic and, mm. and, and no GMOs. Mm -hmm. and, and baby boomers are just like, make it taste good. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a bridge that everybody's <laughs> trying to gap right uh -huh. now. But there's a way to do that with the, the millennials to create good tasting mm -hmm. food. It's not like, it doesn't have to be bland just because well, you're trying to. And like, it's the passion of creation mm -hmm. that I feel like is the the bridge between those generations. It is you a bridge, I mean? and as as the world gets smaller and smaller through travel, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. millennials know what they want to eat because they've been somewhere else. They've been to Southeast Asia. They've been mm -hmm. to Europe. They've yeah. been to this great restaurant in X city. Ooh. What's your favorite type that. of food to cook? Southeast Maybe. Asian. Southeast mm -hmm. Asian. So that's because I'm Irish over here. Because you're Irish. <laughs> <laughs> do you do a good corned beef cabbage too? I do. Good. <laughs> I feel like we could ask him. Do you do a good fill in the blank? And yep. the answer would sure be do. yes. Oh my sure gosh, guys, some of the, the recipes that are in this edition, I think, because sure. you know, we're starting to get close to that new year. We're all like, oh, dad gummit, I should probably start eating a little bit better. We'll try this. Um, get yeah, some try of the inspiration from U.S. Foods because yeah. it's all about flavor and bringing some excitement back to the kitchen. Yeah, Absolutely. and for some great recipes, usfoods.com. Mm. They can mm. go there. Uh, food, find the Food wow. Fanatics page. Also, uh, are, are we going to, I think we have some oh of these. Oh my gosh. I would go to a well. restaurant to order those. Okay. Right? I mean, that's, why I'm, that's why I'm going to the restaurant <laughs> is for those. Absolutely. Right. These and are fantastic. Um, foodfanatics.com or usfoods.com. Us uh, Chef Michael Rhodes, so good to have you back today. And thank you so much. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Mm. Happy Holidays. Well, hopefully I wiped fantastic. all the sauce off my hands <laughs> and I'm not getting it thank on his coat. Thank you very Thank you. Good to Thank see you. you. Well, the new year will bring a new program. Um, it's from Tasia Blue mm -hmm. Rescue. Yeah. Helping our service <laughs> members and homeless dogs, how it's all going to work, we'll tell you straight ahead.